an IDPA fail. Spoiler alert, I'm the one that failed. This is a hard one to do, but it's coming right up. Welcome back to 22 Short Thursdays on Get On Target with Link. This week is a tough video to make. Um, this is about me failing at an IDPA match. About a week ago, a little more by the time this is uh, posted. But I competed in an IDPA match, one of the Monday uh, night matches that I, that I frequent, and I was disqualified, and rightfully so. It was a humiliating experience. Not humiliating because I was embarrassed in front of my, my betters. Um, I was humiliated, personally. Uh, I know exactly why this occurred. I know why I broke down, but I broke down in the most fundamental way, and I was disqualified over a muzzle violation, a 180 violation, that was just horrible. It was just horrible, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing this because we're not immune. You are never immune, and you're never relieved of your safety um, responsibilities, and I... I dropped the ball in a huge way. I want to tell you what happened and why it happened. This is not an excuse. This is, this is what happened, and these are some of the things that can happen mentally that can lead to a breakdown that's this significant, and it's just inexcusable. And there are ways to uh, avoid what happened mentally. And I'm going to suggest some of those ways now. So to start out with, the night before the match, I had planned to go, and I had a horrendous night's sleep. I just, it just was a disastrous night's sleep. I woke up, I was exhausted. I had a full day of work to go to, went and did my job. Um, and at the end of the day, I was getting off at 5 o'clock, it's a Monday, so I was going to watch Monday Night Football that night. And I said, well, I've got this big gap of hours. I had struggled going back and forth. I was so tired. I was just really, really hurting. And I had thought I would, I would skip it. I would just skip it. I was too tired. But I got to the end of the day, and I had this big gap of hours um, before I wanted to kick back and watch the game. And I said, what the heck, I'm going to go and uh, go and just do my best. I'm going to shoot the match. So I went. This was my first mistake. I was too tired. I should not have gone. I should have just said, no, I'm too tired, and I'm, I, I need to go home and just get some rest and skip it this week. I didn't do that. Um, the draw of going and competing was too great, and I, and I went when I shouldn't have. So I went. When I fought... Oh, when I uh, shot my first stage, I got up there and I, the, the buzzer went off and I started my stage. When I took my shots at the first target, you'll see this on the video um, of this failure. Um, I, I couldn't see the target well. And I, I thought I, I thought I was missing it, and I couldn't see uh, my my holes in the target, and I thought I was missing it. I didn't have faith in my in my sight picture and and what I was doing, and I thought I was missing. So then I went to my second target, which was a headshot, which required you know a little bit more precision, and the uh, the penalties for missing low were big. So and I couldn't see it. I couldn't see if I was hitting where I was shooting, and my frustration was just building like crazy in, in my head. I'm like, that's where my concentration went, was the frustration of not being able to see the targets. Went to my third one, couldn't see those at all. I just, I had no idea if I'd hit it at all. The irony of all of this is when I look at, the, at this clip up close, I did it fine. I was I was doing fine. I was shooting fine. Um, the frustration was unnecessary. I was I was doing fine, but I couldn't see. My frustration got all I was thinking of was how frustrated I was about not being able to see. And as I moved back from the from 
my last target in that first bit of the stage to go to the next part, I broke the 180 and had a muzzle call against me and that was it and I was done for the day. It's awful what I did. Um, I put that range officer at risk and I am deeply embarrassed by what happened. I'm sharing it on here and going to take the humiliation that I'm undoubtedly going to get from, uh, from you folks out there. Um, as a, as a, as a warning, if you are not, you, you need to have all the other thing that I had going on was I had my, my, uh, GoPro hanging around my neck and I was also had thoughts about that, about getting good footage for you. And there's, there was too much going on in my head and not enough concentration on what I was doing and in the moment and, and what I needed to be doing. As a result of this, at least for the near future, for the next few matches that I compete in, because they were gracious enough to make this not a bit, I reached out to them, I emailed them with my sincerest apologies of what had happened, I'm just, just terribly embarrassed. And for, they were very gracious, as they always have been to me at, at uh, Colonial Shooting Sports Academy, uh, Shooting Academy's IDPA group. They were great, and they were saying, no problem, next time, you know, come on down, just do it again, it happens. They'd seen it before. I hadn't felt it before, and it was... a big, big deal to me. But so for the, for the near future, I will not be um, shooting video at this. I'm going to leave the camera aside. It's it just, I need to just, just do one thing and one thing only and leave everything else aside. And I recommend that that's what you do. If you're going to be shooting IDPA, you have one responsibility, and that's safety. The rest is gravy. Shooting fast, shooting accurately, uh, improvement, all of that is secondary to taking care of the people that are around you. Um, that's it. That's all I'm talking about today. Um, I, I'm willing to take the deserved criticism that I should get for this uh, for this debacle at um, at that match, so that you'll know what the what the risks are, what the potential of um, of not doing the right thing, what the potential is, and it's it's grave. So. <sighs> I failed, guys, and that's all I'm talking about today. No, no mitigating factors. The, the stuff that I told you about, about why it happened, isn't to excuse it. It's a lesson learned. I had too much stuff going on in my head other than what I was supposed to be doing, and I was not in the condition that I should have been there in the first place. You, uh, you got to have the discipline to just say, no, I didn't have that. And I won't do that again. I'll get a good night's sleep before a match. I'll feel good when I go or I ain't going. And there won't be any video for a little while. Not, not of the matches. I'll tell you what happened. I'll tell you if there is. And obviously, you know, I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell you what happened, good, bad, or indifferent. So this was the bad. The good, the bad, and the ugly. The good is always being there with these people, and it's just a, it's a good it, it's it's a good thing. The bad was me being unprepared, and I'm not indifferent about it. So, if this was useful to you, yeah, go ahead and share it with friends. Like the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're here. So, till the next time we meet on Get on Target with Link, I will hopefully see you.